actually had to move from where I grew up in Indiana to Ohio so that I could actually have a chance at life. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the very first inaugural episode of Nick Speaks, where we speak up, we speak loud, and give a voice to those who feel they don't have one in the disabled community. I am your host, Nicholas Comstock. I am so excited that you are joining me here today for this inaugural episode of Nick Speaks. You guys, today I'm going to be talking about something that is probably going to disturb a lot of special needs parents. Special needs parents, I'm going to drop a bombshell on you, so I hope you're ready. Stay tuned. You will not want to miss it. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on Apple and Spotify And we are coming to other podcast platforms soon, so I will keep you updated on that. So here's the bombshell that I'm going to drop on you special needs parents. Are you ready? Here it is. Your special needs kids are going to become special needs adults. Let me say it a little different. Your disabled kids are going to become disabled adults and you have to be ready for that and a lot of times parents of special needs kids don't think that uh, they think that their kids are never going to become adults they're never going to have fulfilling lives they're never going to be what the society calls normal You can't see, but I just did air quotes, normal. Um, And they're never going to have a fulfilling life as a able-bodied person would. And I'm speaking from experience because my parents never thought that I would move out on my own, that I would be in a relationship, that uh, I would have a successful career. My parents thought I would always be with them. And, you know, funny enough, uh, when I started looking for places to live at the age of 28, uh, my dad came to me and said, Nick, I totally support the idea of you moving out, which I'm going to be honest They did not, but they just said that because they knew they couldn't do anything about it. He said, I totally support the idea of you moving out, but I would rather you stay with me and mom because you would be in a Christian controlled environment. Actually, he said a controlled Christian environment. Um, He used the word control first. And I don't know what it is about special needs parents, because I know mine aren't the only ones. They have this strong desire to control every aspect of their special needs adult child's life. And I think it's because a lot of special needs parents think that their child's disability is just basically meaning the end of life and that is so not true in many ways people with disabilities can have just as a fulfilling life as a person without a disability as what i like to call a disabled person and for this episode being the first i want to be clear You hear me using words like disabled or disability. I am not a fan of the words different abilities or differently abled because in this generation in which we live, it is all about standing in your truth and being who you are. But it seems as though the disabled community 
doesn't want to do that. They want to say words like differently abled or different abilities. They totally want to get rid of the words disabled and disability. Remember, your disability is not who you are. It's just a part of you. It's just a label. But people with disabilities are so much more than just a disabled person. Who am I? Who is Nicholas Comstock? I am someone who loves music. I am someone who loves to play the piano. I am someone who... <clears throat> Uh, loves to uh, watch Judge Judy. I am someone who loves to eat. I am someone who loves to laugh. I am someone who loves deeply and very passionately. I have, when I have the unction to, I love to write. Uh, of course, I have to do it through voice recognition because of my low vision trouble. So sometimes Siri likes to be dumb and put words that I did not say. So writings can, writing can sometimes be frustrating, but I still love to do it. I am so much more than just my disability, which is CMV, cytomegalovirus. You say, Nick, what is that? It is just simply now a part of the cerebral palsy family. And my mom was diagnosed with it when she became pregnant with me and my twin brother. And before you say, oh my God, Nick, you're a twin. That's so cool. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Trust me, it's not. But um, my, you know, my mom and dad, you know, they didn't say anything about my twin brother not being able to go out and do things because uh, he was completely normal. We're going to have to define what normal is because some people think he has more of a disability than I do. But anyway, um, but, you know, my parents never really had any question about my other brothers being successful. You know, my dad always told my brothers, you know, if you don't like my rules at the age of 18, there's the door. But he never told me that because my parents never saw me living on my own. They saw me being completely dependent upon them. Special needs parents, let me ask you this question. How often do you think of your child's future without you? How often do you envision your child's future without you? I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of you don't even want to think about that. If you're in your car listening to this podcast right now, I am telling you, I probably made you pull over and almost had a stroke because you're you're thinking I'm always going to be here for my child. Uh, you know, I'm never not always going to be here. And I'm sorry to break the news to, to you. CNN News Alert, Fox News Alert, whoever you get your news from, here's a news alert. You're, you're not always going to be there for your child. For your special needs child, your special needs child is going to have to learn to function in a world without you. And if you don't start teaching them how to do that now when they're 13, 14, 15, when they become 25 and let's say something drastically happens to you, and they have to go live in some type of group home because you, your child's main caregiver, has done everything for them up to this point, they're going to be lost. They're going to be up the river without a paddle, as folks I, folks I used to grow up with used to say. 
Uh, they're going to be up the river without a paddle. And you need to start teaching your kids and you, your special needs kids how to function in a world without you. You say, Nick, my son, my daughter is nonverbal. I don't know how they're going to function in a world without me. I don't know how they're going to function in a world without somebody. Well, see, that's the problem. Even parents in that position, they are so tight-knit and they are so scared that they won't even let other people in to discuss their child's future or give their child another option. Because to them, it's offensive. Why wouldn't my child, you know, be with me? Or why wouldn't my special needs child want to be with me? We all have a special bond. Breaking news alert again, special needs parents. Your kids don't always want to be with you. And guess what? As much as you love your special needs kids, you don't want to be with them either all the time. You need a break. Now, this is not to say, oh, I'll put my kid in a group home that has special needs just so I can live a life. No, if that's what your kid wants to do, if if they want to try to live on their own, don't discourage it. Look at all their options for them. But for some reason, a lot of parents of special needs kids discourage their young adults from living on their own because they are so fixated on their disabilities. They haven't taught their kids to adapt to their disability. And so they don't know how to either because they've never done it themselves. And that's not healthy. Special needs parents, your special needs child is going to become a special needs disabled adult. And it is time to start having conversations at the age of 13, 14, 15 years of age, age maybe even 12 years of age, as to, hey, son, hey, daughter, I know you're in a wheelchair. I know you have Down syndrome. I know you're on the spectrum for autism. But what does your future look like in your mind? You need to tell, you need to ask your kid that. Have them write a vision board as to where they would want to be when they get done with high school or when they get done with school in general, whether they, you know, go to college after that. You say, go to college? My kid's having trouble right now. My special needs kid is having trouble right now just making it through the seventh grade. I haven't even thought that far. Well, you need to because it'll be here before you know it. And one day, I know you don't want to think about it right now, special needs parents, but you're not going to be here. And like I keep saying throughout this podcast, your special needs child is going to become a special needs disabled adult. And it is time to start having the conversations. Not, we'll cross this bridge when we come to it, like my parents did. Well, guess what? I forced them to come to that bridge because I was hell-bound and determined to get out of that house. And you know what's really sad is when I was 15 years of age, I had a phys ed teacher. For those of you who don't understand what phys ed is, it's a PE teacher, physical education. And I had a PE teacher when I was 15 years of age start talking to me about, hey, Nick, you know, can you picture yourself driving your own car? Can you picture yourself, you know, going in a canoe around a lake somewhere? Can you picture yourself uh, living on your own? And to be honest with you, I couldn't because it was just at that time where my parents started to put this idea in my head that I was always going to be with them. And I was just going to grow old with them and they were going to take care of me until they died. 
And so when I was 15 years of age, I blew that PE teacher off. But man, when I hit 18, I was ready to go. And, and unfortunately, my mind was ready, but I had no idea how to do things. I had no idea how to budget my own money. I had no idea um, how to uh, look for housing or anything like that. I actually had to move from where I grew up in Indiana to Ohio so that I could actually have a chance at life because the county where I lived in Indiana just did not have the resources for people with disabilities to live on their own at the time. And that was my dream. And um, my parents moved to Ohio back nine years ago. Um, we had something happen in our church, uh, which I may talk about in other podcast episodes. May not, I don't know, has nothing really to do with disability, but whatever. Um, we had something happen in our church in Indiana that caused my parents to move from Indiana to Ohio, which is where my grandparents are. And so that started the process nine years ago of me wanting to live on my own. And my parents lost their mind uh, there for a while. And uh, I finally made it on my own on January 3rd, 2018. And one of the best things I've gotten to experience is living on my own. I've lived with some crazy roommates, which I'll talk about on the podcast of Nick Speaks. So you don't want to miss that. Not one bit. I'm telling you, it's going to be fun. But listen. I'm going to wrap this podcast episode up. Um, parents with kids that have special needs, special needs parents, listen to me. You really need to start having these conversations. You really need to start training your special needs uh, child, your special needs teenager, um, how to live on their own, how to budget their own money, how to do their laundry if they're physically able to do that, how to cook a meal if they're physically able to do that, because they need to know that you're not always going to be there, and there's not always going to be somebody in this mean, crazy, cruel world, although there are still a lot of good people in the world, there's not always going to be someone in this world that's going to be willing to hold your your adult son or your adult daughter's hand who has special needs and say, come on, I'll help you. And if you don't teach them that now, your special needs adult daughter, your special needs adult son is going to be lost. If you're waiting until you die or something drastic happens and you have to drastically change your special needs uh, child's life because you're no longer able to take care of them. You need to start having these conversations now. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me for this inaugural episode of Nick Speaks, where we speak up, speak out, and speak up loud for those who feel they don't have a voice in the disabled community. Please join me for my next episode. I'm going to have interviews. I'm going to have monologues like this. And so you're not going to want to miss one thing. Also, follow me on my TikTok channel at Nicholas Comstock because I do shorter clips of advice like this all the time. And I tell funny stories. So follow me at Nicholas Comstock on TikTok. And if you want to reach out to me to be a guest on my podcast, reach out to me at nickspeaksofficial at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time on Nick Speaks. Bye-bye.